Well, hello and welcome to the show. I'm glad you've joined us this week. I am so excited about this series we're calling Intern Mania. I want to introduce to you my interns and the horses they're riding. We're going to start that right here on Discovering the Horseman Within. Now the sun is rising slowly On the mountain you must climb And the trail that takes you closer to the source And you dream about the moment when you leave it all behind and Climb up on that one true horse That one true horse The perfect partner built to ride One true horse A bond that cannot be denied You would search forever Just to have the chance To take a ride on one Gonna take a ride on one true horse. So I've given each of my interns the chance to pick one thing they want to learn and they're going to get a 10 minute lesson on it. McKenna, over here on my left, uh, told me she wanted to do some trick riding. I have no expertise in that area. So I called in Carly Davis from Denver, Colorado, who was an intern of mine four years ago and has ridden with the Western Airs most of her life and teaches Roman riding. Carly brought a couple of her horses that are going to be in our sale this upcoming year. She's one of our guest consigners, but they had never been Roman ridden on before. She wasn't really aware of what she was getting into until she got here. So she's starting them and she's starting McKenna and McKenna's horses on Roman riding. That's what we're getting ready to do. Girls, take it away. Carly, it's all yours. So first I'll demonstrate how to do it, and then I'll teach McKenna. Okay, great. Look. Carly, is it made easier by the fact that you have two different height horses? Um, not really. It's a little, a little tougher. It's better if you have similar size horses so their strides match. Look. As I said, she really wasn't aware of uh, this coming on, and so she actually had the, the bareback pad shipped up here, and uh, yesterday was the first time she hooked these two horses together uh, to work on the Roman riding at all. So it appears to me, Carly, that one of the things you have to have is like Elvis Presley knees. Yes. You do a lot of thigh strength. Come on. Tell me about equipment. So you can use your regular head stalls. You want to have a Q-whip to help them keep going. Or if they're trained by voice command, that helps as well. And bareback pads with a quick release snap in between that holds them together at the girth. Okay. That helps keep them to where you don't end up doing the splits? Yes. Oh. That explains some of the problems I've had in the past. <laughs> it would, wouldn't it? Your horses need to be calm, calm with you standing on them and sitting down on them in case you fall. And they need to be able to neck rein. Pup. In case you fall, I didn't really like that phrase. <laughs> That's only when you're learning. Oh, well, McKenna. That makes you feel so much better. There you go. <laughs> Now, actually, to me, it looked like the faster you went, the easier it got. Yes, it is. A slow walk is hard to keep your balance. Once they start trot and get in cadence, it's a lot easier to balance. The stopping and starting is the hard part. Cool. So McKenna. Yes. 
we've got your two sail horses mm -hmm. and we already have them rigged up with the bareback pads and the chain right with the quick release in case the horses freak out or start to get tangled up we can pull the string okay. and they'll separate to prevent any accidents so go ahead and hop up on them that's just how i was going to get up on him too oh and i would have for sure taken the time to knock my, the dirt off my shoes helps okay. if there's no slippery mud on your boots <clears throat> so hold both reins like you normally would ride them okay good to stand up you'll reach over and put hands on both their withers put your left knee up underneath you kneel on it and then put your right foot on the pad okay and then stand up on your other foot <laughs> yeah just like that very good now while you're okay. up there you need to keep your knees bent okay your back straight and just like when you're sitting on a horse riding you're gonna go where you look so okay. you don't want to look down <laughs> you want to look <laughs> out up ahead <laughs> okay way up, way up. i know way up sky's the limit so absorb all the movement in your knees okay if you feel off balance then the more you squat the the better you will have control. Okay, and I saw when you were going around that your horse's heads were close together. Is that? Yes. Okay. You want to kind of keep reining them together. Okay. If they start to try to separate, they'll slow down and you'll kind of get stuck and need to get them going again. Okay, we'll try to avoid that at all costs. <laughs> now I notice she's not carrying whips. At first, when you're learning, if you're off balance and you hit them with the whips too much, you may end up in more trouble than you <laughs> than you needed, than you wanted to. So obviously we don't we probably have the ideal scenario, which would be a really broke team of horses to roam and ride on. Yes. But if you just want to fool around at home, this is pretty doable. Yes, it is. All right. All right. So first I'll walk with you just okay. to make sure. Sounds and then good. I'll let you try it on your own. Great. So tell them to walk. Don't forget those Elvis Boys. Presley knees. Oh yeah. Get those I'm things all moving. Shook up. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> Very good. Oh, Charlie horse. Woo. Is she Easy solo? Boys. Easy Easy really? voice. If you get off balance and you fall forward, reach down and touch their, ne their necks, just like you did when you got okay. up on them. Obviously you can tell it takes a pretty gentle horse. You don't want to do this on your kind of unbroke horse that might spook and bolt. You also don't want to lean backwards. You don't want to get your weight right. Right backwards. Then you can accidentally pull on the horse's mouth. Right. And undo all that softening training you've been doing. Oh, we wouldn't want to do that. So if you feel yourself going back, bend your knees forward and okay. try to lean, lean forward more. Okay. Carly, do you attempt you. to straddle their, their spine itself with your foot or do you stand on the rib cage? You stand on the rib cage, the inside of their spines. I'll let you do it on your own now. Okay. You stand on the inside of their spines, your toes pointed up towards their withers a little bit and your heels a little closer so together. So you kind of almost duck walk yes. on the rib cage. Yes. And then keep your knees yes. soft. Squat. Easy. Sit down. So you're going to burn on your thighs yes. a lot. Yep. This is going to Keep hurt. your back straight. Would you like to try a Could trot? I try to pick them up? Easy. You want their heads pretty so much like even. Right there, she could speak to Gage and tell him to step up or... Yes. Caspian and tell him to on, step boys. up. It's easier if they stay head to head in a pair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once you get one behind Easy. the other, it, I would imagine it gets quite a little bit more difficult. Yes, hard to turn. Easy. If we get an even trot out of both of them, she'd be thinking she was queen of the world. There we go. There we go. Hey, there's those Elvis Presley knees. I don't overdo it. Easy, boys. 
Easy, boys. Bear, look at that. Very Gosh, nice. That's not, Easy, boys. That's not too bad. She's not exactly ready to go jump fire or anything, but she certainly got a start on it, doesn't she? No, nope. after boys. a little more practice, she'll be able to add to it like that and do something even more fun. Cool. Easy, boys. Good boys. There you go. There you go. In this segment of the show, I want to introduce you to Robin. Robin has been with us for, I don't know, three or four months, something like that. Yep. And uh, where are you from, Robin? Wisconsin. And what brought you to Wyoming? I loved your method and want to become a horse trainer. That's not bad, is it? That's pretty good information. All right, well, I'll tell you what, working with people who want to learn is so much fun. And so Robin came to me and she said, hey, I really want to ride a finished stop and ride a finished horse. So what I've done, I brought Rusty out here and Rusty's pretty darn finished. And what I'm gonna do, Robin, is I'm gonna step up on him and I'm going to ride a little bit and show you kind of how I want you to ride him. Okay. And then I'm gonna put you on him, okay? So I'm gonna change some of what you would ride on a greener horse or on a younger horse or a horse that's not finished, so to speak. One of the things we're gonna change, you'll notice is a drastic difference, is how you handle your reins, okay? You ride a lot if you've got split reins with them crossed or bridged. Yes. And like that. On a finished horse, I want you to get both tails on the left-hand side and I want you to get the reins split between your index finger right here. And I want you to focus a lot on where you're going. When you want a big stop, you have to trust the horse to stop. By the way, when this horse starts his rundown, he starts hard. Uh, and so you have to, when you feel that jolt, he will scare you and you will think he's not going to stop. He is going to stop, okay? So you have to trust him. And when I say whoa on this horse, I actually push my hand down. I, I push my hand down, that helps me sit down in the saddle. My feet come off of him and I just say whoa. Now, how does that translate to your young horse? You sit and say whoa and if he doesn't stop, you stop him. But first you give him the chance and you trust him to get stopped. Do you have any questions? Do you ride him more with your hands or your legs? That's a good question. You really ride with everything, but your hand is making small movements. Okay, do you see that? I move my hand, that's a cue to him. Okay, so it takes a lot smaller. But then I also, when I did that, I'm gonna move him with my seat. I'm moving with my leg, okay? okay. So when I ride him, it's everything, but it's everything small, okay? All right, so I'll start by loping the circle around you here. And I just wanna ask him to lope off on the correct lead. And I want to look where I'm going. And you watch my hand, it's kind of to the inside. And I'm looking, okay? And a lot of times I'm basically to hold this circle, almost looking at about a 10 foot circle around you, okay? And I'm just holding this circle. Now I want you to be able to ride him out a little straighter and make square corners and ride him kind of where you want to ride him. And then when you want to stop him, you just sit, whoa. Now that was pretty pathetic. He didn't stop, he ran out of gas. So I'm gonna back him up, turn over here, I'm gonna lope off. I'm gonna lope a straight line, make Why a corner. is it so important you don't let him run out of gas? When a horse stops, Robin, he needs to stop with energy, okay? So when I come up here, whoo. I don't want him to fall down to a stop, I want him to stop, okay? Whew. like that. Okay, I wanna see a little more energy in it. All right, now I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna do a rundown and get your slide and stop. The approach to the rundown is as important as the rundown and the rundown is as important as the stop. If I feel my horse anticipating and fading, I'm gonna push him. If I feel him running away with me too soon, I'm gonna check him, okay? I wanna stop about right where you're standing. So if you move over here, Okay. And I'll kind of try to talk to you a little bit. I'm going to lope down there on the right hand lead. And I pick targets. I'm looking at the roping chute and I'm just loping a straight line. And I'm going to make the corner and I've got my dry strip of ground right there. I'm going to check him a little bit, put my hand down, keep him straight. Whoa. Okay. Okay. So. I had a lot going on, right? I had to check him up there a little bit. I had to hold him straight. Don't let your horse get crooked. Don't let him run away on you. Then push that hand down, sit down, whoa. 
okay? All right, so you're gonna have a couple of seconds here, a couple of minute or two to lope him around here, kind of feel him, and then I want you to get that stop. There you go. Okay, get those reins. Yep. Now make sure they're even. You got just a touch more here. There you go. Okay, and just ride him where you want to go and don't be afraid to turn your toe out and use your leg. There you go. Good. Okay, kind of square your corners up a little bit. I want to see him kind of make those corners a little more square for you. There you go. Ride him right where you want him. Now, when you come across to your flat and square next time, just sit down and ask him to stop. Ooh. There. Nice. Nicely done. Okay. All right, so I want you to go ahead and go make a rundown and come right up here and just kind of try and stay on this dry track, uh, kind of the lighter colored strip of dirt and just stop right in here. Okay? <laughs> I'll be hollering things at you you won't be able to hear. Don't worry about that. There you go, nice square corner. Sit. Whoa. Okay, good. Now, he kind of had to hop that. You were going pretty hard. You rode him all the way down. You kept him square, that was good. I'd like to have seen him stayed in the dirt a little bit better. I mean, his, his left foot really never came up. His right foot did a little bit. What I want you to do is go do that again. I want you to exhibit a touch more control. Don't let him take off as hard. He does, I know. But try to hold him about two strides and then let him come. And when you get to the halfway point of the building, I want you to sit. You're riding forward and you're having to go from forward to stop all at once. When you get about the time you turn him loose, I actually want you to sit. Okay. And already be sitting your stop so that when you get here, all you have left to do is take your legs off and say, whoa. When you say sit, you mean kind of just kind of Just drop squish? down in your, that's right. Just drop down in your saddle, okay? So that all you have to do, you're not throwing your shoulders back, because when you throw your shoulders back, you lean on his mouth. This horse is going to stop without you throwing on, any weight on his mouth. Okay, so go ahead one more time. Okay, I want you to aim straight for me. Sit. Good, better. Now, he's coming off kind of crooked off the stop and he did the same thing to me, okay? That's because he's wanting to veer. That was a lot better. It wasn't as long a stop, he wasn't running as hard, but it was way better, okay? Great, okay. let's give it one more shot. There you go. Good job. Now straight. Look at me already. There you go. Sit. Sit. Stop. Good. All right. That was a pretty long stop. I have to tell you, if you turn around and look back, Whoa. let me show you where that stop started. That stop started right here and ended where you are. That's a pretty long stop. Considering 
This horse is not wearing sliding plates. That's a keg shoe that we use outside. This isn't a sliding track, it's deep ground. This horse has a ton of stop to him. He really stops. Okay, so you actually rode that really well. He still kind of come out of it a little bit crooked. That's, you know, something I've got to go tune on and fix a little bit. Do you have any questions? When he starts to veer, just try and push him over? No, once the stop is started, you're not going to straighten it. He's already sitting on his hind end. You're not really going to straighten that. He's already pointed. The, the key to keeping that straight, that stop straight, is keeping your run down straight. Keep your run down straight, keep your horse straight, don't let him veer at all. Then when you say, whoa, it's straight. If you take this stop and look at it, if you go back to your tracks, you can see the veer in them. So I'm gonna walk your tracks. Here is where the stop started, right here. And your tracks veer right there. There was like a five degree turn. Your tracks, are, your tracks are straight coming in right here. And then right here they veer, right there. That little bit of a turn, okay? So that's more what's causing that more than anything else. You've just got to keep that run down straight. You got to keep your lines straight. You got to keep the balance point of your horse where it belongs. Well, I certainly hope you've had as much fun watching this show as we have had in bringing it to you. I tell you what, one thing about life on the Powderhorn Ranch, it's always exciting. Until next time, may God bless the trails you ride. Yeah. Elvis Presley knees, Ken. Elvis Presley knees, right here. Woo! <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Find out more about Ken McNabb horsemanship at KenMcNabb.com. That one true horse, the perfect partner.